Welcome back everybody, Mark here, and in this lesson, lesson 17, I want to show you how to start working with data files. Maybe it's a file we're saving, maybe it's a file we're opening. Um, I wanted to stay in the context of our game, so I really had to think about this lesson and break it down. Um, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to have a save file, and every time we finish our game, if you remember from the last lesson, we got to level 3 and that's where the game ended. Um, when we finish the game, we're going to prompt um, the player to go ahead and enter their score. Now, I called it highscores.txt is the text file. So we'll pump all the scores into that text file. We'll append to it. Um, so we'll go ahead and lay that out. And then what we'll do is when we start a new game, we'll actually reference the last person who saved um, a score. So that'll be the score to beat. So, you know, if if Bobby was playing, you know, his score will show up if he's the last guy playing, and that's the score we have to beat. Just kind of a, a rudimentary way to do it. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let's scroll all the way down. And we're going to go right to the bottom. We're going to go right underneath New Game. Now let's copy this out. We'll paste that and we'll call this I scores. How's that? Now we might be able to later on go ahead and, and sort it out so we actually have high scores in here and we show the last high score. But for right now, let's just show the last score entered. It's kind of the easiest thing to do. <clears throat> so excuse me. So the first thing we're going to do is basically have the player enter their name. So let's go ahead and add a branch label and let's call it, let's turn off caps here. So we'll call it player name. And basically this will wait. And what we're going to do is let's go ahead and set a window width and let's set it to 200. And we'll have a window, oh, capital W there, window height. Let's set that to 150. And then we'll actually have a static text. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, before we do the static text, let's go ahead and just open the window. And then we actually have a window name. So let's say open, we'll call it name or window NF. So we can't resize it as, and then we got to give it a handle. So we'll, let's call it EN, enter name. Kind of simple here. And then we're going to have hashtag EN, which is the handle. And we're going to say trap close. The trap close, and what are we going to call this close? So let's call it player name dot quit. Stuff we've already done before. And so we know we're going to have another handle or another branch label, excuse me, which is going to be player name dot quit. In this one, we're actually going to return. This is going to be part of a, a subroutine, and when we close the window, that's what's actually going to return here. Um, we could have an OK button that had the same branch label, but uh, we'll just kind of do this quickly. Kind of make it a fun lesson, kind of get you guys started, and then you can morph it from there by researching like file dialogues and different things like that that are fun. So what we'll do is, let's go back here. We're gonna add a control to our window that we open. We're gonna add static text. And we're gonna actually reference our enter name window handle. And then this is gonna have a unique handle and I'll just call this txt1, text1, just for simplicity. And then we'll say, please enter your name. You want the character to enter their name or the player. And then we got to locate this in this box somewhere. So let's go 10 on the X, 10 on the Y. It'll be 175 wide by 
say 20 tall. There we go. And then we're going to have a text box. So text box, another control. And we actually want to put this on our window. So we're going to use the handle to our window. And then we'll just call this txt box one. So that's the handle to our text box. And then we're going to go 10. So it's going to line up with the beginning of our text. But we actually want it below our, our text box. So our text box is 20 tall. So right there, if we add, and let me bring the cursor over. If we add the height of our text box, or our text box, excuse me, or our text, geez. We add the height of our text, which is 20, and our Y position, that's 30, and then we want to space it nicely. Let's add 5 to it. So right away, we know that's 35. Let's go 35. We'll see how that looks. So 30, 35, yeah. And then this will be 175 by 20. We'll see how that looks when we get there. So there's two controls on our window. So our player name window is done. The only th other thing we need to do is actually um, work with our player name dot quit. So when we, after we enter our name, when we close this box, we actually want to get the contents of the box. So we're going to use the handle to the text box. And we're going to use this built in command into Liberty Basic, which is exclamation mark, contents, question mark. And then we're going to create a, a variable for it, and we're going to call it player name. So basically, we're, whatever is in the text box, we're going to assign it to a variable called player name. And then inside of our folder, and let me go ahead and open this, and I'll show you guys. We're not going to create a file. We're going to use one I've already created called highscores.txt. You guys can see I have that created right here, highscores.txt. Um, using a file dialog, we could go ahead and create um, that text box or that um, save file. But we already want to have a couple of high scores that we're appending to. So let me go back here. Let me actually show you guys that I have Mad, Bob, Jack, Edwin, and Franco in here. I already have five files. So right now, you know, these are the high scores that we have or the scores that we have. But we want to add to the end of that. So if we play, we want to add some scores to it. Let's go ahead and <clears throat> Excuse me, clear my throat. I'm sorry about that. I know it's not that great on the microphone. But so what we want to do now is we're going to open that text file. So we're going to say open. And it's called high scores.txt. And don't forget the quotes around there. The double quote. And then we're going to say four. And we're going to use append. Because we want to add to it. We don't want to overwrite it. So if we were creating the file, this would be output for output and it would overwrite anything in the file. So if we did this as of like a file dialog and we were saving it as a file name and look up file dialogs, there's some great examples out there. Um, we would create a file with whatever name we wanted and we could create our own extension to that file dot dat dot, you know, HSC, you know, for high score, whatever we wanted to. But here, we're just going to append to a file that already exists, a text file. So we're going to append to it, and we're going to say as, and then it has to have a handle. So let's say high score. And then we're going to say high score. So basically, we're saving the player name, which we already got from just up above there where we created player name and then we're going to say high score and then we're going to pass in score and then we're actually going to close the file this is very important you want to close the file you're working on this is just like windows you want to close these handles um that way you don't get an error 
Um, once we actually are done here, we're actually also going to close the edit name window. So when we close our player name, we're going to save the name and the score and close all our windows. And then we're actually going to go ahead and ask, okay, do you want to play again? So it's going to do all of that for us. So that's the player name and that's how to enter it. So now what we need to do is we actually need to show scores. And we're going to add this right in front of this. So let's be another branch label. This one's going to be show dot scores. And this is a subroutine we're actually going to call um, from the actual top of the file. So actually, before we do that, just because I want to be me, we're actually going to go ahead and set this up and call it. So we need to actually call this from somewhere. Now, we already have our else statement right here, and we have you clear the game, blah, blah, blah. So before we go to a new game, let's call go sub, and let's player name. So this is where we're gonna save it, so if you finish the game, so we're gonna call it from there, and let's change this to five seconds for testing. So let's save this. I'm gonna go back here so we can run it. And we're going to go ahead and run this. And we'll see how many balloons we can get. We got eight so far. Let's see if I can be quicker. I only got five seconds per level. Oop. I'm up to 17. So I got 26. Uh, let's enter Bubba. Bubba. So you can see, and please enter your name. Right up here in the left hand corner, you guys should be able to see that pretty clear. As soon as I close this, it's gonna close this window. It's gonna ask us if we wanna play again. And I'll say no. And then let's go ahead and open this up and let's look at our high scores. So we got 26 and a blank line. Terrible, right? So let's go ahead and look at our code. Why do we have a blank line? So let's see here. Aha, I already see it. You guys see it right here, a good old typo. I did uppercase P, it's an actual lowercase P. So let's go ahead and edit our scores.txt. So let's delete the blanks here. There we go, let's save that. Let's just play it again. Let's make sure that was what the problem was. So we'll play the game again. I got seven so far. And there's a lot we could clean up with this. You know, I'm just showing you guys some ideas to get going. 17. Between all the other projects that I have. But hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. Ah, oh, I got 26 again. That's pretty quick. Now, let's enter Bubba. Bubba. And we'll close it out. And we'll say, nah, we don't want to play again. But let's open it up. There we go. Bubba, 26. So... It was just a typo, upper and lower case. So we got a fix, awesome. So we know the save is working. So that's pretty cool. But when I run the game, so let me run this, it just starts right away. There's nothing that tells me, okay, who played last and what score should I be aiming to try to beat? Um, now, in reality, we'd probably want a list of 10 high scores, but I don't wanna overly complicate our program what I want to do is go ahead and just build this and show you guys what we can do um, how to open and read from a file so we're going to show you who entered the last without getting way too complicated so one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to add another branch label here and we'll put it in front of this move that down one and our new branch label is going to be show dot scores Show dot scores. And now our show dot scores is actually going to wait. And inside show dot scores, we're going to have a window width. 
And let's have it be 250 and window height. Let's have that be 150. We're gonna have a score count. We'll start that at zero. We're actually gonna have an array dim. We we'll call it HS lowercase. This array is array of high scores and we'll say it can be a hundred. Maybe we have a hundred names in there. Maybe even a thousand names. Well, let's start with a hundred. And then let's space this out a little bit. We're actually gonna open a window, open. And we're gonna say, we're gonna call this window latest score. Let's call it latest player. And then it's gonna be a window that you cannot resize as high score. There we go. This is gonna have a trap close, just like any of our other windows. Hopefully you guys are starting to see how we can build many different things. This is gonna be show dot scores quit. We want bracket, not a squiggly bracket. There we go. So let's go ahead and add this branch label. So show dot scores quit. This is gonna be the one that's going to return just like our other one. Once this returns, we're actually going to close high scores. So our quit's already set up, so that's perfect. So we want our quit to do some stuff. So we wanna actually have some text in here. But what we wanna do is we actually wanna open that file that we appended to. So we're gonna say open. And then we're going to say hi scores.txt. It's a text file for input because now we want to read it. So we want to input that data into our program as, and we'll call it scores. That's the handle. And then we're going to use a while loop. So we're going to say while EOF, that's end of file. And it'll say scores is equal to zero. So if it's not the end of the file, it's going to be zero. If it's the end of the file, it's going to equal one. Once it reaches the end of the file, it'll be one. So, and then that's where we'll have our wend. So this is called a wild wend loop. You guys haven't seen this yet. So this runs at least once. So basically, while the end of the file scores is equal to zero, so while it's not the end of the file, really, once it reaches the end, it'll be one. Let's go ahead and do this loop. Inside this loop, <clears throat> excuse me, clear my throat again. We're going to have a for loop. So we're going to say for i equals one to 100. That's how many items we could have in our array. Let's say end if. So basically, while there's still 100 items in our array, but what we want to do is we're going to say if end of file, we're going to use this again, scores is equal to zero. Then, and there might be a better way to do this, but this is the way I found it works pretty quickly for our example. I haven't refactored it to make it any faster, but maybe I will later on. But so basically, we're going to loop through everything, and while we're not at the end of the file, we're going to input one of the scores. So input the handle to scores, scores, hs, dollar sign, this is our array, i, then we're going to say score count equals score count plus one. So we're gonna add one to the score count. So as long as we're reading items, we're gonna add one to the score count. As soon as we reach the end of the file, we're gonna stop adding to the array. 
So our array is only going to have like eight items in it right now, maybe 10, depends on how many saves we have. But it'll add up to 100, so we can have 50 names and 50 high scores um, with, with 100 there. But that's the loop. That's how we read in that file. And then we can actually use this on some of the static text that we're going to add, some, some controls to our window. So we're going to add static text. And this is hs.txt1. And then here is the latest, or not latest, but how about last? Player and score saved. And that's uh, about 10 on the X, 10 on the Y, 200 Y, and 20 tall. Then we'll have static text high score dot txt2. And you can have better names for these. I've had other names, attributes, whatever. But this is what I'm using for right now. It will say name. And then here we're going to use a semicolon because we're actually going to pass in. We want the name. Who is this? So we're going to say score count minus one. And the reason why we're going to say that, this is the last item in our file, score count. So whatever that got to, that's the last item in the file. Seeing that we're saving a name and then a, um, a high score, we actually want to go back one and actually display the name here. So if we were just to say score count, that would display the high score. If we say score count minus one, that's going to go ahead and put, uh, display the, the actual name. So that's what we want to do. Then we're going to place this on the screen. So 10 and then 35, 120. So that'll display that. And now let's go ahead and do static text handle the high scores dot txt3 and of course this is going to be our score and once again this is going to be a semicolon here it'll be hs dollar sign and this one will just be score count because we know the last item in here is going to be the actual um, score so we'll say 10 we'll do 60 100 and 20. Now a lot of times what I do is the reason why it's 60 if you add 20 and 35 that's 55 and then I add 5 to get 60 so I space everything 5 apart. So that should be it for this. So let's go ahead and save this file. I know I haven't gone back to here for you guys to, to zoom in. Hopefully you can still see it in the other one. If not, let me know in the down there and I'll go ahead and uh, get on the comment section and I can go ahead and do something about it. So the only other thing we need to do is go right back up to where we're calling all of our beginning routines. And basically, after we load the window in the sprites, we actually want to go sub. And all we want to do is say show.scores. There we go. So I'll save that. Go back to here so you guys can see what I'm showing you. I'm going to clean up some white space. So if I run this right now, let's look at our high scores text. Bubba 26 is the last item in there. So let's run this. And what did I forget? Aha. So it's a for loop, so I need a next. I. Let's save this. There we go. Bubba 26. That's the last score in our file. So if we actually run and play, we'll shoot. We'll let it go through. Okay, 7, 9. I'm a bad shot, so I'm up to 10. Levels are quick because I turned them down so we could see what was going on. I cleared the game with an 18. I'll add a new name. So I'll call myself Hanson. Once I spell it right. Hanson. And I'll close that. Want to play again? No. 
So scores, it's mad at me for scores. Let me scroll down and I know exactly what I did already. I know right where the bug is, it's actually right here. And what we didn't do is after the wend loop, after the while wend, we didn't close scores. Right here, remember how I said it was important to close these handles? So there's scores. And all I want to do is close. There we go. So close scores, I'll save that. Run it. So it did save Hanson, 18. Let me close this. We'll shoot. And I'll just let it run through once I get to eight. Seven, eight. We'll let it tick up. It's gonna run right through. And you'll see now when it, almost five more seconds. You'll see once it ends this time, we won't get that error. So one, two, three, we cleared the game. Um, this is Buckeye. We'll close it, no error, no. Works perfectly if we run it. There we go, Buckeye only got a score rate. So I hope you guys learned a little bit. I hope you liked the uh, episode, beginning working with file handles, how to open and save files. Um, hope you like it. Please do some more research. If you do, don't forget to subscribe. And please don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. See you guys in the next episode.